So Jamaica, when I left Jamaica, I had no choice but to leave. Uh, I had the intention of going back, of course, because I came on the Shelter City program, and the Shelter City program is a program in the Netherlands that invites human rights advocates from all over the world, from different countries, to come to the Netherlands to to build their network and to to gain some more experience, and also it provides the opportunity for rest, opportunity for rest and respite. I think you pretty much call it like a safe house if you will like a lighthouse so you know when fishermen are at sea and they get a little bit weary and they need to come and rest that's basically how i would describe it but when i came it got more difficult for me so i had no opportunity to stay i received a, a let an email sorry uh to say that you know they've spoken with my mom and they've spoken with my brother and if it is that they ever see me then, you know, of course, they would take my life. And prior to that, when I was in Jamaica, I also had the experience of uh, waking up to see a dog being burnt and tied to my gate. And of course, it was very traumatic, but, you know, I had to get counseling for it and stuff. It was very traumatic, but at that point, I still had it in my intention to return to Jamaica. You know, it's the country I was defending, it was my people, and I love my people, especially LGBT Jamaicans who they don't have a choice in the matter. You know, they didn't choose to be born gay. They didn't choose to live in a society that hates them. But in reality, they chose life and they want to live. And so those are the people I was protecting and those are the people I wanted to go back to. But it got to a point where I just couldn't go back and I had to also think about my life and myself. And if I wanted to to, if my life was just going to add to the statistics to say that this person was a human rights defender and he was also killed because of his sexual orientation and the work that he does. Uh, personally, I, I want to be a psychologist, but I don't want to just be a psychologist who sits in his office and you know you have clients and you speak with them and you help them to get through. I just don't want to stop there. I want to affect policy. I want to affect um, to, to, how, to contribute to building the society, to shaping uh, frameworks and different things where people have a say and people feel included and people aren't just, I just feel like the Netherlands is at a place of tolerance personally. And I think it can be far better because for a country like the Netherlands, I think it should be more on the acceptance scale where people are accepted, not necessarily just tolerated. So I want to help to push that forward. I want to also shed light on, on sex workers interestingly especially transgender sex workers because there's also a little bit of balance in the netherlands as it relates to transgender sex workers who are also migrants and that in itself in itself comes to a lot of issues uh you're a sex worker so you have your own issues you're a trans sex worker so that's another layer of issues you're a migrant transgender sex worker so that's a whole whole host of problems so I, these are some of the people I want to work with in the future. Personally, it just brings happiness for me. It brings joy to see someone else smile. You know, uh, I personally believe what Maya Angelou said when she said, "There's no greater, uh, there's no greater torment than bearing an untold story." And some of these people have so many stories, but people don't want to listen. And not only don't people want to listen, and some people listen, but they listen with an agenda. They listen with an agenda to criticize, or they listen with an agenda just to respond to what you're saying. But people want people to actually listen, internalize, and to actually, if in some way you can help them, do something to help them. And that is where I see my life. That is what I've dedicated my life to helping and that is what motivated me and and also the story of the young man who came to to stare to share his story sometimes when i remember that i just keep going you know that's my personal motivation as a human rights activist it doesn't mean that you're a superhero necessarily people will view you as a hero because of the work you do but you also have your own struggles you also have your own issues but i think when i remember the work that i'm doing i think when i think about the people who 
who just smile because of the work that I, I do. They don't even have to say thank you, but to see that they're living good lives and they're okay, that in itself is a motivating factor for me. That, gives, that makes me so happy. It makes me so proud. And it has nothing to do necessarily with religion or my sexual orientation. It's just solely based on the fact that I'm a human rights advocate who's dedicated his life to working with people.